The subject under discussion is solemn and profound, focusing on three distinct groups of people who will be left behind at the time of the rapture. It is of utmost importance for us to fully comprehend this divine revelation, as it prompts us to examine our hearts and align our lives with God's righteous and eternal purpose. Our guiding scripture in this matter is John chapter 3 verse 18, which starkly declares, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This scripture lays bare the eternal reality and the consequences of belief and unbelief in the Redeemer, Jesus Christ. When addressing these three groups of people, it's crucial to understand that the message today is not one of condemnation but of fervent love and earnest warning. It's a clarion call to repentance, faith, and transformation in Christ Jesus. It's an appeal to all to forsake the transient and deceptive allure of this world and embrace the eternal and imperishable kingdom of God. The divine and eternal repercussions of the rapture are not hypothetical. They are very real. The Procrastinators The first group we address comprises the procrastinators. These individuals know they should follow Christ but keep putting it off. They understand what needs to be done to walk with God, yet they keep saying, I'll do it tomorrow. However, the gravity of this delay is that it places them at risk of missing the rapture. The rapture is a one-time event, and if they miss it, there are no second chances. These procrastinators are aware of God's existence, his expectations, and the necessity of being born again to join God's family. Still, for various reasons, they postpone. They need to understand that every moment counts, and the urgency of the rapture is imminent. The message is clear, stop procrastinating. The belief that one can delay the decision to follow Jesus is a dangerous deception. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone, and it's essential to get one's life right with the Lord now, wherever you are. God is ready to hear your plea and forgive. Christ came to save sinners, and no one is beyond his redemption. The self-righteous. The second group we must address is the self-righteous. These individuals rely on their perceived righteousness for salvation, blinding themselves to their own imperfections and preventing them from experiencing the true righteousness found in Christ Jesus. The peril of self-righteousness is significant, and it's essential to recognize that those who depend on their own perceived sanctity for salvation will be left behind at the rapture. It's important to note that aspiring to live righteously is not the issue. The issue lies in relying on one's own righteousness for salvation, a perilous path that disconnects individuals from the genuine blessings of God. It's crucial to surrender self-righteousness at the foot of the cross and embrace the righteousness that comes through faith in Christ Jesus. Those who do this will not be left behind but will be part of the glorious gathering with our Savior in the clouds. The unbelievers. The third group that demands our attention is the unbelievers. Those who do not place their belief in Christ are destined to be left behind at the rapture. This truth is emphasized with stark clarity in John chapter 3 verse 18. Unbelief is not a mere absence of faith. It is a resolute rejection of the Son of God, leading to an irrevocable separation from the divine love and mercy found in Jesus Christ. Unbelievers are not merely awaiting condemnation. They are already condemned by their own choice. They have entrenched themselves in a spiritual desert devoid of the living water of Christ. The rapture is a selective gathering of those who have chosen to accept Christ. Those who persist in unbelief will be excluded from this celestial assembly. The anguish of being left behind is not a temporary setback. It is an everlasting separation from the divine presence of God. The message is clear. Believe in the Son of God and be part of the imminent gathering of the saints. The message is a call to urgency, repentance, and faith. The rapture is a reality, and it is not to be taken lightly. Each one of us falls into one of these groups, and it is crucial to heed the call, align our lives with God's purpose, and not be left behind. The urgency of the message cannot be overstated. It's a reminder that we are living in a world of uncertainties, where tomorrow is not promised to anyone. The rapture is not a distant, theoretical event. It is imminent and can happen at any moment. Therefore, it's vital that we act decisively and not delay in our response to God's call. For those who have been procrastinating, 
thinking they have more time to make a decision, it's time to recognize that time is slipping away. There's no guarantee that you'll have the luxury of enjoying your 20s, 30s, or any specific time frame before turning to God. The lie that there is always tomorrow is a dangerous deception. People of all ages, health statuses, and circumstances can be called from this life unexpectedly. The message is clear. Don't put off what you can do today. Wherever you are, in your current state, you can turn to God and seek forgiveness. God is ready to hear your prayers and extend his love to you. No matter how many times you feel you've messed up, Christ came to save sinners, including you and me. You can be born again today, right now, and secure your place in the eternal kingdom. Regarding the self-righteous, it's crucial to understand that personal righteousness, no matter how well-intentioned, cannot replace the righteousness of Christ. The reliance on self-righteousness for salvation is perilous, leading to a disconnection from the genuine blessings of God. It's a silent killer of souls, and it's essential to surrender this self-righteousness at the foot of the cross and embrace the righteousness that comes through faith in Christ Jesus. Those who do this will not be left behind but will partake in the glorious gathering with our Savior. As for the unbelievers, it's a solemn truth that those who reject Christ are already in a state of condemnation. Unbelief is not a passive state. It's an active rejection of the saving grace offered by Jesus. The rapture will be a moment of reckoning for those who have rejected the Messiah. It's not merely about missing an event. It's about eternal separation from God's presence. The urgency is to believe in the Son of God and accept the salvation he offers. This is the only way to avoid being left behind and to partake in the imminent gathering of the saints. In conclusion, the message is a call to action, a plea to embrace faith and righteousness in Christ, and a stark reminder that we cannot afford to procrastinate or rely on our own merits for salvation. The rapture is a decisive event that will separate those who have chosen to follow Christ from those who have not. The choice is yours, and the time to make it is now. Don't risk being left behind. Choose Christ and secure your place in the eternal kingdom.